So today's my lecture will be on the one of the subdivision of anatomy that is the we call as a radiology or we call as a radiography. So whatever this is very important to diagnose the diseases which are the abnormal X-rays are there. But in the first year, you have to remember the how to read the normal X-rays. So when you see the X-ray, that is a whatever this X-ray films and X-ray, you have to identify the what is a normal and what is a abnormal from the X-ray film. So X-ray is uh, discovered by the William. Rowington, who is uh, discovered in the 1895. So William uh, Rotigen, he is uh, discovered this by mistake. That is, uh, which is he is doing with a uh, rays, and uh, on the glass he found the images of the different uh, body parts. So by chance he got the discovery of the that is uh, done by the William. Rowington, who is discovered the X-ray during the 1895. Okay, so in this X-ray, we are going to have the two types of X-ray. You have to remember first one. You have to plain X-ray. Then we are going to have the contrast X-ray. So two types of X-ray you have to remember first one, which is you have to remember about the plain X-ray. We are going to uh, differentiate how the plane and contrast X-ray. This is one which is you have to see the plane X-ray of chest. That is we call as in a PA chest. So you have to remember in this the PA chest. How we are going to uh, take the X-ray of this? It is a what? Whatever the patient is made to face on the uh, film side. And that is a X-rays are passed from the behind, from behind to the which is the person is patient is standing and film is there. That is a rays are passing from behind to front. So that is we call as the PA posterior anterior aspect of the uh, X-ray. Then other we are going to have in the plane X-ray we are going to have a AP from the front to back. So we are going to uh, take the front to back. Then one which is we are going to take the lateral view. So in the plane X-ray, we are going to have the two or three types of X-rays we are going to take. That is the one PA view, AP view, and lateral. So you know the uh, anterior posterior AP, posterior anterior that is a PA, then lateral view. So all these all you have to remember in the plane X-ray. Next you have to read the how to read the uh, X-rays. I have told uh, when you want to visualize the anterior aspect of the structure of the body, that time we are going to take. This is a PA chest. We want to visualize the heart and lungs anteriorly. So that is we are uh, passing the rays from behind to front. And this is the front structure will be seen better. So that is the one we are going to call as a PA chest. Then second one, we want to visualize the posterior one. Then we are going to get the passing the rays from the anterior to posterior. The posterior structure of the bodies are seen very well. Then lateral view, when we take the on the lateral side, even we have the oblique planes and all oblique view. That also you have to remember. So when this X-ray is displayed, or when you get with such type of X-ray, you have to read which is a what is the type of the X-ray you have to tell. Then second one you have to mention the what are the structures seen that is you have to mention. Then what are the abnormalities are seen in that X-ray that also you can. But anatomy as you have studied, you have to read the X-rays which are normal X-rays. Okay. So first one here, whatever the you give the what is the X-ray? This gives the radio that is a what is the radio opaque imaging images of the radio opaque different tissues in our body. We have the different uh, that is we have the air, we have the fat, 
we have the soft tissue and uh, other like uh, even we have the blood also that is a fluid considering air in the lungs so these they give the different uh, shadows on the x-ray field so that you can remember bones fluid that is uh, you can get the uh, fluid air and uh, you have any foreign uh, bodies like uh, metals and all they give the radio opaque image on the film so that is the one which is you have to re remember all these are uh, that is a radio opaque they are not allowing the x rays rays to pass through that so that they block and they give the image so that is the one which is a, you have to remember about the concept of the x ray and how they are give the different uh, giving the you are going to get here hard shadow filled with the liquid you are going to get the uh, whitish shadow then black lungs which are seen black because you are going to get the filled with the a so that is a blackish shadow we are going to get so that these all bones we have that is the we are going to get they they are also seen in the uh, light bright color so these will be you are to identify the shadows of the different structures of the body so this is the one how to read the phs this is the x ray you have to tell identify the x ray means you have to tell the this is a phs x ray then in the phs x ray what are the you have to mention this in this is the first one you are going to get centrally there is a set of heart then both the side you are going to get the lung shadows then you have the clavicle both the side we have the right and left clavicle and posteriorly in the upper part you get the vertebral column then below when you see this you have the ribs both the side ribs are uh, seen here on the both the side then you have the here we are going to get right dome of diaphragm left dome of diaphragm very important here you get the left dome of diaphragm right dome of diaphragm so when this type of x ray you see you how to read and what you have to write in the points are the important this is a phs x ray and this phs x ray which is there which shows the different organs of the body like a chest region in the centrally we have the heart shadow heart then here also we have the arch of aorta and the descending thoracic aorta here we are going to get the apex of the heart then both the side lung shadow and ribs rib cage is seen clavicle we have both the side in the upper part we have the uh, lower cervical and upper thoracic vertebrae and inferiorly we have the dome of the diaphragm so both the sides you have to remember right dome and left dome of diaphragm okay so this is a phs and how to read that is a phs i have shown then next comes about the other plane x ray i have told the two uh, what you are going to get the x rays which is you can mention the two x rays in that plane x ray this is a two types in that only i am giving you the plane only plane x ray this is the one which is the x ray shows you the shoulder joint we are going to get the right shoulder joint so how to identify the x ray or how to comment on this uh, x ray the x ray which is shown here that is the one which is a right shoulder joint which is showing the we have the glenoidal cavity of scapula and the head of humerus we have the upper half of the shaft of the humerus then we have the clavicle then acromioclavicular joint then we are going to have the lateral and medial border of the scapula then we have the rib cage so this is you have to what is the comment of this x ray you have to comment that is the this x ray shows this the identification is it is a plain x ray you have to tell what is the type of x ray first then you have to proceed for the comment so you have to mention here the first one that is a right shoulder joint showing the different uh, bony parts that is like the head of humerus and shaft of humerus glenoidal cavity scapula and uh, lateral border medial border and uh, border of scapula and we have the clavicle 
So this is very important to find out the plane X-ray of shoulder, right shoulder joint. So this is the one which is you have to remember. Next comes about the uh, that is a term about the which is you have to remember about the knee joint. This is the one which is a X-ray of knee joint. In the knee joint, which is you get the lower, this is a plain X-ray, and uh, how to comment? This is a plain X-ray of knee joint, which is showing the lower end of the femur, upper end of the tibia and fibula, and we have the patella. And this is the lateral view of knee joint, and this is the we are going to get the uh, AP view of knee joint. So AP and this is a lateral view, you can see the x-ray in this. So you have to comment on this x-ray is how? This is a plain x-ray of knee joint showing the lower end of the femur, patella, upper end of the tibia and fibula. And this shows the two side by side, one is AP view, one is we are going to get as a, that is the lateral view. So this is the one which is you have to remember, including bony part articulation, we have the patella, then we have tibia and fibula, and lower end of femur. Very important, you have to remember. Again, you have the soft tissues, ligaments, which are seen, they are the blurred shadows around that also you can see. So that is not much important when you get the joint. So this is the one which is you have to x-ray of knee joint. Then when we take the X-ray of uh, skull. In this, you have to cranium. That is the uh, one which is uh, we have taken the lateral view of the skull. Lateral view of the skull here. When we take the X-ray, this is also plain X-ray of the skull, which is a lateral view, and it is uh, taken on the lateral view because we have to see the, all the bones here. So including the, you have to get the bony uh, cranium which is the covering outermost bony cra cranium. Here we can see the frontal sinus, frontal sinus and we have the maxillary sinuses. Then we have the maxilla and mandible. So we are going to get mandible, lower jaw, upper jaw which is we have the maxilla nasal bone, frontal sinuses also we are going to get and we are going to have the cranium. So inside which is we are going to have the brain. So that is the which is outermost which is you have to mention that is the cranium. Here we have to remember the cervical spine. We have, have the all the upper uh, seven we get the seven cervical bones in that upper which are we are going to see like the atlas and axis and third and fourth cervical vertebrae. So this is the one which is you can remember about the, it is a lateral view of skull and this is a plain variety of x-ray, plain type of x-ray. So this is the one which is you can uh, remember. Then this is also the same one which is uh, you can uh, remember the reading the skull, which is the skull bones which we get that is the one which is you see the, all the cranium, upper jaw, lower jaw like the maxilla and mandible and here we have the cervical spine. So these you have to see, these are the sinuses which is we are going to get it. Frontal sinuses we have, maxillary sinuses which we are going to get. And this is all which is the cranium, outline of the cranium. So it is also the plain variety of, uh, plain type of x-ray, plain x-ray of skull lateral view and showing the different parts bony parts you have to explain next going to the other variety plane we are going to get like the, which is we have the this one which is a, you have the spine that is a cervical spine which is we are going to get the uh, AP view where the lower part of the skull is there then cervical spine, upper part of the thoracic cage is there. You can see upper part of the thoracic cage showing the ribs. And this uh, we have the cervical vertebrae. Identification of cervical vertebrae, all spines you get the total here. 
and uh, clavicle also you are going to get and this is the spine and which is we are going to get the lower or the base of the brain which is we we'll get the skull bone that is the occipital bone so occipital bone of the skull and uh, we have the cervical vertebrae and upper part of the thoracic vertebrae and we have the clavicle and ribs so this is a ap view of that is a cervical region neck region so that is the one which is you have to comment when this type of x ray the next which is uh, already we are uh, discussing the plane variety of x ray so in this plane this is x ray of which is we get the hand we are going to get the hand x rays you can identify the all the bones we have here the uh, bones which you get as a lower end of the radius ulna this is the plane x ray of we get the hand not the wrist joint you have to tell but wrist joint is included but total involvement of hand so how to read this x ray so this is a plane x ray of the hand which is showing the lower end of radius ulna then we are going to have the in this uh, we have the all eight carpal bones almost all the eight carpal bones proximal row distal row so we are going to have the scaphoid lunate trigeminal and fijiform and trapezium trapezoid and capite all the four bones which are you are going to get in the that is we call as the carpal bones then we have the five metacarpal bones then we have the after that we have the phalanges so we have the total 14 phalanges but you can see the first second third fourth fifth metacarpals then we are going to have the these are the phalanges we have the, the proximal phalanges and distal phalanges and middle phalanges distal middle and proximal phalanges and these are the we are going to get metacarpal bones so uh, carpal and metacarpal bones that is you have to remember so how you are going to read this uh, x ray this is a plane variety of the type of x ray which is showing the this x ray of hand which is showing the lower end of radius ulna this joint we get the uh, all eight carpal bone scaphoid lunate trigeminal fijiform trapezium trapezoid and capitate and hamate then we have the five metacarpal then we have the phalanges so this is the one which is you have to read about the plane x ray of hand next we are going to remember about the one abnormal which is uh, i am going to show how the fracture of x ray uh, you have to identify here fracture of radius ulna this is a four arm x ray this is a x ray of four arm which is uh, taken including the elbow and wrist joint and this is a plain x ray one is uh, we are going to get the anterior posterior view and one is a lateral view so lateral view and ap view which is we are going to get and here you can see the fracture of the radius ulna shaft of the fracture of the radius ulna shaft is both the radius ulna fracture so this is the one which is you can remember or you can uh, identify the this is one abnormal x ray that is abnormal x ray means what that is a fracture is seen here fracture of radius and ulna how to comment on this this is a one which is a x ray of forearm plane type of x ray showing the that is a forearm x ray forearm bone like radius ulna then we have lower end of humerus and uh, we have the upper end of radius ulna here lower end of radius ulna and we have the wrist joint so elbow and wrist are covered in this then we have the bend here uh, fracture line is seen that is you have to remember about the that is a one which is a fracture of the x ray this one which is a one which is you should remember this is a fracture of the line which is you can remember uh, remember in this side will be the fracture of the Uh, radius ulna so other which is the parts which is you are going to get lower end which is the styloid process and all which is you have to mention so this is the one which is a, a lateral view 
and AP view of the forearm X-ray. So this is all the, we are covering the plane X-ray of the uh, plane variety of X-ray. And in this plane X-ray, you have to remember the this is also the uh, which is the, we are going to get the wrist joint. Wrist joint which is uh, taken maximum highlighted. We can see the lower end of radius ulna and plane X-ray of the wrist joint you can call. So wrist joint is maximum highlighted here and we have the lower end of radius ulna and all the eight carpal bones. You have to identify all the eight uh, carpal bones which are properly here seen. You have to remember them. With the hook of hammock is identified with the hook of that is a hook is seen here. That is one you have to remember. Then we have the after the eight carpal we have the metacarpal and phalanges. This is the lateral view of the wrist joint. So that is one which is you have to remember. And this is very important to diagnose the Collis fracture. Collis fracture where we are going to get the dinner fork deformities. We are going to get the dinner fork deformities. That is one characteristic in the we have the Collis fracture. So that is one which is you have to remember. This is the one lateral and AP view of the wrist joint. So this is the plane variety of X-ray. Next we have to deal about the how we take the spine, lumbar spine X-rays and all you have to mention. In this you have to remember about the almost all the these are the vertebrae, lumbar vertebrae. This is the X-ray of lumbar vertebrae, AP view. So when we take this, you can see the both the little part of the we have the sacrum and the ilium of the hip bone is covered. So here in the inferior you can see the iliac bone, ilium, then we have the sacrum posteriorly and these are the lumbar vertebrae. Here you can see the uh, ribs, rib cage, 11th and 12th ribs can be seen. And these are the vertebrae which is you can see lumbar vertebrae. To see the lumbar vertebrae or the we are going to get the lumbar region or highlight the lumbar vertebrae that time we take the this x-ray which is we call the plain variety of x-ray. So this is the one which is you should remember. Then uh, this is all about the first variety of uh, x-rays. Then second type we are going to get as a one which is important second uh, variety of x-rays. That is the one you remember that is a, a contrast x-ray. Almost all I have shown you the almost all the study of the plane x-rays. Now other second type which is comes about the contrast x-rays. Here the radio opaque uh, uh, media is used. Radio opaque medias are used and those after that we are going to take the x-ray and we, these radio opaque they give the shadow on the x-ray plane. So this is the one which is the x-ray shown. This is the one which is we call as a barium meal x-ray. Barium meal x-ray which is you can see here that is the stomach is seen here. You can see the almost all the outline of the stomach. Here almost all angular notch is there and this is the stomach. Here we have the fundus of stomach filled with the gas. How the gas shadow is appears here you can remember. And after the person is made to drink the barium. This is the barium sulphate we use. Barium sulphate. It is like a milk like appearance whitish. And patient is made to drink it. Then while drinking we take that is a, a barium meal x-ray. If you want to highlight while drinking, esophagus can be traced. Esophagus there x-ray we can take. Then after drinking, you can take the x-ray when it reaches to the barium sulphate. BASO4. BASO4 barium sulphate which is allowed patient to drink. And afterwards we are going to get the series of x-rays we are going to take. And those we are going to call Next series of x-rays we take when barium is reaches to the intestine and that is we call it in a barium follow through. Barium x-ray, barium meal, barium follow through. 
so when we patient is allowed to drink the barium barium sulfate it is i have told it is a milk like so allowed to drink while drinking only we take the x ray so that is giving the shadow of esophagus here not seen but here after the follow through where the barium is filled in the stomach region you can see so almost all the outline of the stomach is filled with the barium so that is we call as a barium meal x ray so what you can how you are going to read this x ray you have to read this is a one which is a contrast or the special uh, x ray it is a one of the contrast to variety of x ray contrast media is used is barium sulfate and it is a taken x ray after the barium meal and barium follow through so that you have to read the what are the here structure seen here the all the parts of the stomach is seen you can see the fundus of the stomach body pyloric antrum pyloric canal we have pyloric canal pyro pyloric antrum body and fundus and here we have the duodenum and duodenal cap so duodenal duodenal cap is a one of the normal one and this is a one which is a small intestine when barium is enters whatever the liquid remains about 2 hours 1 and 1/2 hours in the stomach then after 2 hours 2 and 1/2 hours it is enters into the small intestine so that is we call as in a barium barium follow through so barium meal which is includes the you have to concentrate on the highlight of the uh, stomach okay so how how you are going to read this x ray or what is the comment on this x ray this is a one which is a contrast x ray and uh, which is a, a we are uh, called as a barium meal x ray barium follow through x ray contrast media is used barium sulfate radio opaque and here the parts seen are you are going to get the parts of the stomach that is a fundus of the stomach body pyloric and uh, pyloric antrum pyloric canal here we have duodenal cap and here we have the duodenum and this is a small intestine then other part which is you can see the uh, lumbar vertebrae so that is all is important but most important is it is a barium meal x ray and parts of the different parts of the stomach you have to explain including duodenal cap which is the most important clinical anatomy you have to find in the normal x ray and you have the angular notch which is you can get the angular notch in the stomach so so outline will be the it is a like a marking line so outline is not disturbed by any thing then it is called as a normal if it is interrupted by the outline marking then there may be the chances of getting the gastric ulcer gastric ulcer we are going to get where there is a filling defect or there is an interrupt in the continuity of the line so that is one which is you have to remember in the barium meal so barium meal x ray what is barium follow through what is the x ray you have to identify so this is a very important special type or the contrast variety of x ray when we uh, go to the other one which is the next one you are going to get this is also one which is you are going to get the uh, barium follow through or barium meal x ray you can see the how the stomach is appeared narrow which is a uh, vertically appears it should be the oblique one but here you have the fundus how the gas shadow is seen here you can see both the domes of diaphragm you can see both the side and small intestine entered barium that you can see so this is the one which is also same uh, comment on this is it is a barium meal x ray or barium follow through where you can see the parts of the stomach fundus body pyloric antrum pyloric canal and this is the second part of duodenum and small intestine so barium reaches to the small intestine means you have to explain that is a barium follow through means still this is a barium uh, x ray which when you can identify ileocecal junction from the you get the duodenum duodenum to the ileocecal junction where the barium is reaches we call as in a barium meal x ray barium follow through from ileocecal junction to the rectum 
we are coming from the rectum uh, that is we are going to deal perium enema we call from down to above we are enema we call that is the uh, that is the rectum to the ileocecal junction here we are going to get duodenum to the ileocecal junction then we are going to call it it is a barium follow through okay so you have to mention other ribs you can see vertebral column ribs domes of diaphragm uh, above here you can see uh, in the vertebral column all that is in there but main you have to highlight on the it is a contrast variety of x ray barium meal x ray barium follow through which gives the all the shadows like the, we have the fundus we have the body pyloric antrum pyloric canal and duodenum also we can see so this is a small intestine when barium meal is entered this is a small intestine part so this is one special or the you can contrast variety of x ray then uh, what is a barium enema i have told when we uh, person is uh, made enema given enema with the barium so it covers the almost all the large intestine reaching to the ileocecal junction i have told when person is drinks <coughs> from esophagus stomach to the duodenum small intestine ileocecal junction that is a barium meal and barium follow through when we uh, do the enema of barium from the rectum it enters into the ascending sigmoid colon ascending colon transverse colon we call ascending colon then here ileocecal junction <clears throat> this is we call as an barium enema here also barium sulfate is used as a contrast media you can see the all the shadows of the <clears throat> large intestine when we want to diagnose the diseases of the large intestine distal part of the large intestine then we are going to advise for the barium enema in the uh, upper part of the git like esophagus stomach duodenum and small intestine we advise the barium meal barium follow through okay that is one you can see and uh, this is all the parts of the large intestine you have to mention here and that is the one which is a this is a x ray of barium enema and uh, it is a uh, done to diagnose the distal parts of the this is of the distal part of the intestine here we are going to see the uh, rectum then sigmoid colon descending colon transverse colon ascending colon we are going to ileocecal junction we are going to get and uh, uh, that is a distal part till the ileocecal junction uh, that is a dye is there so that is one which is you have to remember and this is we call as a barium enema then next which is you have to other part other contrast x ray or this is the one which is a plain x ray this is the one which is a plain x ray of the uh, abdomen we call as a this is a x ray of kub this is a plain x ray plain x ray which is you can see the all the kub kidney ureter urinary bladder to see the visualize the that is a kidney ureter and urinary bladder so this is the you have to identify this is the x ray of plain x ray of kub kidney ureter and urinary bladder so what you can see you can see the lower part of the ribs and this is the vertebral column lumbar vertebrae both the side you have the hip bones and you have the sacrum and coccyx in the pelvic region this is a pelvic inlet pelvic inlet you have both the side you can see the here head of femur and greater trochanter lesser trochanter and pubic symphysis and obturator foramen obturator foramen pubic symphysis pelvic inlet sacrum coccyx we are going to see and this is the hip joint also you are going to see total and the lumbar vertebrae and in this region shadows of the kidneys we get and the lower part of the rib cage is seen so this is a plain x ray plain variety of x ray which is we call as a kub kidney ureter urinary bladder so this is the one which is you can remember about the kub x ray
so how to read this discipline how you re read already plain x rays like that you have to read this then next variety comes about the one more contrast one which is you are going to get you are going to get the contrast uh, x rays in this uh, almost all the you can we call as a this x rays intravenous pilography intravenous ivp so when person is made to injected the dye in the blood then when blood circulates these are the iodine uh, varieties that uh, product uh, that is a uh, intravenous injection is given and that goes through the blood it reaches to the kidney then uh, kidney start filtrating so that is excreted through the uh, kidney to the ureter urinary bladder urine so during that time we are going to take the x ray so we are going to give the intravenous we call intravenous pilography pilography we call because we have to highlight the kidney ureter urinary bladder so both the kidney shadows we can get here here you can see the right and left kidney and here you have the all the ureter both the we have the right ureter left ureter till that you can get here you can see the shadows of the kidney stone that is we have the uh, kidney stones both the sides you can see which is we are going to get as a, at the kidney region so we call as a kidney stones we call so one thing which is you have to remember both the side it is a one to identify or the location and size of the kidney stones so that is we are going to get in the kidney stone first step you are going to advise kub you can draw you can advise for the plain x ray but afterwards you have we want to confirm that is the size and location exact location of the stone then we advise for the intravenous pilography so should not be confused with the kub plain and uh, uh, that is a that is a intravenous pilography so here you can see the kidney shadows you are going to get the right kidney left kidney here the ureter you can see and both the side both the kidney is consisting in this that is a right and left kidney stones renal lithiasis we call renal lithiasis or the kidney stone or the uh, renal stone that is you can if these shadows are seen in the both the ureter then ureteric stone we are going to get ureter here they are there then we call it as a ureteric if they are found in the bladder then bladder stone so that is the one which is you can remember how to read this this is a contrast x ray we have used the intravenous injection then afterwards we have taken the x ray of abdomen region and in the abdomen this is a x ray called as an intravenous pilography when after the blood circulation blood reaches to the after the injecting it reaches to the kidney and it will be x rayed filter filtration of the blood then x rayed this is through the kidney and ureter urinary bladder these shadows are given here that is the appearance of the stone so this is the one which is you have to identify intravenous pilography it is a contrast variety of x ray and here contrast media is we are going to the use the iodine uh, that is a compounds which are injected that can give the uh, radio opaque imaging so this is the one which is your tell shadows of the right kidney left kidney we we have the these are the intestinal part and uh, this is one centrally you can see the vertebral column that is the one which is this is also one which is a special or the you can contrast variety of uh, x ray that is a pilograph this is also a pilograph which is you can remember here also you can see the all the urinary bladder urinary bladder is filled with the x ray that thing that is a pilography where you can see the again here kidney stones kidney stones ureter normal here the bladder is filled with the that is the pilography taking when the this reaches to the bladder so urinary bladder then ureter 
and these are the shadows of the kidney right and left and both the kidney consisting the having the kidney stone and this is also a, how to comment this x-ray the comment or reading of this x-ray this is a contrast x-ray and it is a one which is a intravenous pilography which is showing the right and left kidney shadows kidney right and left and we have the both the shadows like we have the stone white shadows those are the right and left kidney kidney stone is consisting ureter in the vertebral column this is the one which is a hip bone and this is a pelvic brim or the pelvis which is consisting the urinary bladder so this is a urinary bladder region where taken here pubic sympathies so this x-ray identification you have to tell it is a x-ray of intravenous pilography it is also contrast type of x-ray so next comes about the one more in order to see how the uh, major uh, this is the identification of the intravenous pilography this also you can see the trace the normal which is a exhibition of the ureter through the ureter both the side right and left ureter you can see both shadows of the right and left kidneys you can see and here you have the urinary bladder so urinary bladder see you can get the total tracing of the ureter both the side you have the ureter and this is the kidney and this is the x-ray of contrast and it is a x-ray of intravenous pilography ivp you can write or intravenous pilography contrast variety of x-ray not plain don't write kub because see what the contrast media is used that on that you can identify next comes about the one more uh, which is we are going to get that is a sulfing hysterosalpingography we are going to get when the uh, check the uh, patency of tubes in the uh, females uh, we are going to inject the dye in the through the cervix and it enters into the we are going to get in the uterus <coughs> from the uterus it is reaching to the uh, uterine tube and ovary so uh, this is all the uterine tube but we are not getting on the left side so that left tube is blocked we are going to get uh, this is a left tube which is not traced much and left tube uh, that is a uterine tube or the fallopian tube left side blockage is seen here and this is the one which is we uh, do this type of x rays to patency of the tube so we are going to enter through the genital that is uh, cervix till that cervix after the cervix we inject the dye into the uterus and the uh, uterus afterwards we are going to lift the dye reaches to the both the side till the fimbrial end of the uterine tube so that this dye which is reaches to the fimbrial end of the fallopian tube then the tube is normal it is not blocked but dye is not gone to the left side here you don't get uh, this type of image on the left side so left blockage of tube we can get here so this is the one which is a we call as a uh, salpingography okay salpingography that is a we are going to call this this is also contrast variety of x ray so in the contrast i have told barium meal barium follow through barium enema then ivp then we are going to get histosalpingography histosalpingography this is one which is you can remember so after this last one which is we are going to get uh, that is the one uh, computerized tomography we are going to have in this uh, almost all you mentioned the uh, uh, that is the one which is uh, you can see these all images which is you can get that is the one which is uh, you have to remember all the images on the different sections of the skull or the different section of the brain and this is the one we call as a ct scan of brain ct scan of brain this is the one which is computerized tomography computerized tomography we are going to get in this all different levels of the brain we are we are going to take the sections of the brain 
different sections we are going to take the uh, image in and that is all shows you can see the outer cranium and in the center you are going to get the brain which is the cerebrum cere cerebrum which is you can see it. then both the side ventricle lateral ventricles you can see in the one image at the ventricular level we are going to get the ventricles then at the base of the skull level you are going to get the optic chiasma and uh, we are going to get the at the sphenoid bone and all that is a base region then uh, these are the uh, this is the one x-ray you have to call it is a one we call as a ct scan of brain and different uh, levels at the different levels we are going to take the different x-rays of the brain and that is we call as a ct scan of brain that is a computerized tomography then again we have the special type we have the mri we have pet scan we have nowadays we advise to find out the cancer and all pet scan is advanced technique then we have the mri mri magnetic resonance imaging magnetic resonance imaging so mri and afterwards we have the pet scan pt pet scan is there so this is the one which is you have to explain here is the that is the this uh, x-ray which is we call as a ct scan of brain so what we can see here all the brain parts and different levels of the brain we are going to get ventricles and cerebrum cerebellum and all the bones which are we can see here we have the foramina magnum and all so all the parts where you can you study the skull those parts we ought to write and study the brain you ought to see like this how the ventricle levels how the ventricle seen lateral ventricle then how the uh, lower part of the brain at the base level how it is seen that is all is seen in the different levels of the brain we take the x rays so that is we call as in a city brain or the city scan of the brain and that is we call as in a that is a computerized tomography MRI is next to that you are going to get magnetic resonance imaging then pet scans also we are going to get to find out that so these all are the x rays which is you can remember in the how to comment and how to read the different x rays different type of x ray who discovered x, x ray when it is appears 1895 it is discovered then william rotington is uh, rotington who is discovered this so x ray by mistake he discovered and uh, that is uh, all development is from that plain x ray till we are pet scan we have reached now. this is advancement of the radiology so this is our subdivision of anatomy that is a radiology radiographic anatomy that is we have studied the plane and contrast and in that we have studied the barium meal barium enema barium follow through uh, ivp intravenous pyelography kub plane then i have told the histosalpingography and ct scan of the brain so these are the common important uh, radiology of the x ray how to read how to comment on these x rays you should know that is all about the today's my lecture of the uh, radiology that is uh, how to read the x ray or the how to identify the x ray how to comment the x ray so that is the one which is you should remember in the my today's lecture that is the uh, radiology